Hello, and welcome to SBTI's training for financial institutions, module eight on validating, disclosing, and recalculating emissions targets. In this module, we'll be diving into what happens after you've developed, particularly validating, disclosing, and recalculating. At this point, you should be familiar with how to develop scope one, two, and three baseline and target calculations, which were overviewed in modules three through seven. After completing this module, you will be able to complete the SBTI submission process and disclose targets, explain how and when to disclose progress towards targets, articulate what triggers the need to recalculate targets. Let's get started. To submit your proposed targets to SBTI, a financial institution must fill out a detailed submission form. We recommend that you familiarize yourself with it before delving into the calculations. The form requests critical information necessary to validating, including general information, the GHG inventory, target information, portfolio target boundary, optional scope three targets, supporting documentation, and contractual and billing information. This form, as you can see on the left-hand side, can be found on SBTI's financial institution webpage. Always check there for the latest. FIs have 24 months to submit their targets after signing their commitment letter. A standard format is used to submit and communicate all targets to enable corporations and stakeholders to be able to easily compare across entities. Utilizing targets already set by financial institutions, we've provided an example for each of the buckets here. For scope one and two, there's a combined percent reduction of scope one and two for that target year from a base year. Financial institutions can pick absolute or physical intensity targets. You can see the standard language in the first row and an example in the second row. For scope three operational, which is optional, companies set a target similar to scope one and two. For scope three finance, the format varies by asset class. Please refer back to module five and six for examples or section six of the guidance for the specifics. There are two other requirements when submitting one's targets, a headline target and an action plan for scope three. For headline targets, one must show the percent of the total portfolio covered across all investment and lending. That's regardless of whether or not it's mandatory, optional, or not covered. For an action plan, a company must describe specific focus areas of theirs that will help them achieve their scope three emissions reduction. We provide an example from KB Financial Group, which shows that by setting targets on all the required assets and some of the optional assets, it covers 12.9% of total investment and lending activity. Again, that's 12.9% out of all of its activity, whether mandatory, optional, or not covered. Additionally, on the right, we have some examples of an action plan. We've provided a summarized version of some of the steps that KB is taking to lower their scope three emissions, including engaging clients on this topic, expanding their green financing, phasing out coal, and setting targets for mortgages once guidance is established. The entire validation process is iterative. Financial institutions should expect to engage with SBTI throughout this process. First, FI should complete the submission form, which we just overviewed. Second, SBTI form FI should submit via the SBTI booking system that can be found on SBTI's website. At this point, there's about a month timeline between submitting and the next available date. Third, FIs will undergo a review process with SBTI. There are two SBTI validators that review sequentially from one another. This often requires engagement with the financial institutions and takes 30 to 60 days, depending on the response time of the FIs and whether the materials were comprehensive and clear. Afterwards, the reviewers will take the decision to the committee for approval. If not approved, a financial institution has six months to submit. Again, finally, once approved, FIs must announce their science-based targets publicly. We'll review that step momentarily. There are a number of questions FIs often have, so we focus on three of the most common ones here. So first, what supporting documentation is required? Clear, more comprehensive submissions are faster. It's important to articulate what asset classes are and aren't included, and within each asset class, the details of what is included. 
outline the structure of the company, send in all files or screenshots of tools utilized. If there is a public reference to any of the info, link to that, for example, an annual report. Next, what type of communication can we expect to hear from SBTI? FIs will likely not hear anything from SBTI between booking and actual first meeting. However, both email and phone will be used throughout the validation process. And as you saw on the prior slide, it's an iterative process once the validation begins. Third, where does SBTI see the largest discrepancies or errors in FI submissions? Incorrect application of the GHG protocol and PCAP accounting methodologies are the primary example. Once approved, companies, whether financial institutions or not, should announce targets and disclose progress. SBTI will publicly list FIs on their website. However, FIs must also announce their approved targets within six months. SBTI will provide a welcome pack on how to communicate once approved. SBTI recommends that companies show their progress by reporting via CDP's annual questionnaire and corporations' own annual progress and website. Financial institutions are required to annually disclose their progress, efforts, and key details on their targets. SBTI does not require a specific publication format for financial institutions. Many organizations publish an annual sustainability update where they would include SBTI's required disclosures. Regardless of the format, financial institutions must disclose their scope one and scope two emissions, a qualitative summary of their decarbonization efforts in the past year, and three, their scope three category one through 14 emissions if they were included in the financial institution's targets. FIs must also disclose progress towards their targets, which will vary by the approach. For FIs who have set targets using the sectoral decarbonization approach, they should report the reduction in terms of the physical intensity metric, such as 3% reduction per kilowatt hour for the electricity generated generation projects that the FI financed or invested in. They should also include progress relative to the annual expectation given the target. For example, that they had originally intended on a 5% reduction that given year um, for the sector total pathway. Next, the portfolio coverage approach requires that financial institutions report the percentage of relevant asset classes covered by approved SBTs companies on an annual basis using the same weighting approach chosen for the base year consistently throughout the target period. Financial institutions may further indicate whether they are on track to meet the target bid coverage of SBT companies set out for the five-year target period. Lastly, for the temperature rating approach, the FI should disclose both portfolio temperature ratings, that's scope one and two rating, and the scope one, two, three rating. In addition, FIs must submit what percentage of their portfolio have public targets versus where it was attributed to a default score due to the lack of ambition by both GHG emissions and portfolio invested values. The below two tables show example of required reporting re results for FIs, a temperature rating for the past year across scope one and two and scope one, two, and three, and the split of publicly available ambition versus default scores across both emissions and invested values. By annually disclosing progress, financial institutions can hold themselves accountable and continue to make progress against their targets alongside their clients and portfolio companies. All companies will need to recalculate targets over time. There are two scenarios where this is required. Targets must be reviewed, if necessary, recalculated and validated every five years. Material change. If a company experiences a material change, that would significantly change the consistency or relevancy of the target. It must be recalculated and revalidated. We'll address this in more detail on the next slide. All primary ecosystem actors like GFANCE, PCAF, and GHGP require or strongly advises a, rec a recalculation policy. Let's delve into that policy on the next slide. All companies will need to recalculate targets over time. There are two scenarios where this is required. What policy should it include? SBTI recommends qualitative and quantitative triggers that could indicate whether there's a change in relevancy, consistency, or completeness of the set of baseline or target. As we noted on the prior slide, PCAF, GFANS, and GHGP are all aligned on this. 
structural changes. There are three common triggers for recalculation. The first are structural changes, such as mergers, acquisitions, or divestments that change the structure of the organization. Newer, different data. Additionally, there could be significantly new data used to calculate targets. An operational shift. Alternatively, there could be a large operational shift that impacts the baseline or target, such as choosing to in versus outsource, change offerings, change asset classes, or more. You can see we've provided very high-level examples here. However, it's important for each company to come up with its own. Concluding this module, you should leave with a few key takeaways. Submitting and validating is an iterative process between SBTI and the financial institution. Firms must track and report emissions progress annually. Targets will need to be recalculated every five years or when material changes occur, including organizational restructuring or new emissions data availability. Thank you for listening.